It's true, the Philips Hue lights are well designed and stylish. Together with the Hue Bridge, you have an extensive Hue ecosystem, plus the same hub allows you to connect to few third-party accessories. However, that connection is limited. Now, thanks to Zigbee to MQTT, you can control your Philips Hue lights, plus a zillion of Zigbee devices locally in Apple HomeKit. Well, I am in love with Zigbee to MQTT because I'm able to host a self-sufficient smart home that works locally and has no need to connect to any third-party hubs or cloud services. It just works with or without an internet connection and keeps me always within budget. And plus with Zigbee to MQTT, I can pick and choose to have an affordable smart home with a mix of third-party Zigbee devices, connects with Homebridge with minimal configuration and flawlessly works with Apple HomeKit. Anyways, if you're into smart home DIY and obviously love the Apple HomeKit ecosystem, then I have done tons of tutorials, videos that you can use right now. So pretty please do take a look and don't be shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. So for all of this to work and integrate your Philips Hue devices into Apple HomeKit, we will need one, obviously a Philips Hue device. I'll be using these Bloom devices Two, you will need to have Zigbee to MQTT installed and running on your network. Don't worry, I have guides in the description how to install the service using a Conbee 2 or a Sonoff Zigbee dongle together using a Raspberry Pi 4 or a Synology NAS. And then from there to enable the HomeKit integration, we will be using Homebridge. As always, I've also left guides in the description on how to install it using a PC, Mac or a Synology. Well, I have broken down the video into four parts with the timestamps in the description. We have one, a quick overview of Zigbee to MQTT. From there, we'll go pair the devices in Zigbee to MQTT. Then we will go ahead and install the plugin and configure and auto discover the devices in Homebridge. And from there, a quick HomeKit demo. So let's not waste any time like I always say, and let's jump into this tutorial. Okay, let's start with what is Zigbee to MQTT. Well, Zigbee to MQTT basically allows you to create your own Zigbee hub and it gets rid of your property Zigbee hub and bridges that you have right now in your home. So basically, when you look at the word Zigbee to MQTT, Zigbee allows you to take a combination of a Zigbee dongle with a uh, hardware such as Raspberry Pi, Synology NAS or even your PC, combine it together, install a software, download all of the device drivers and it allows you to connect to all of the Zigbee devices. And then from there, with the help of MQTT, you can use this messaging protocol, uh, which is standard for any IoT device to communicate with each other. Now, the beauty with Zigbee to MQTT, that zillion of devices that I had said, these are all of the devices that you can install. So you could go for covers, your blinds, your dimmers, uh, lights a lot more so this basically allows you to connect with the portfolio of devices that are freely available in the market no licensing no brands just pure white label products so in short zigbee to mqtt allows you to create your own zigbee hub or bridge and allows you to connect to white label products that are freely available in the market and allows you to have that affordable smart home now, first to install Zigbee to MQTT, I've got uh, uh, three guides in the description that you can use to have it installed. In case you have any problem, I'm always available to assist you via a remote session to set up Zigbee to MQTT and take advantage of all the white label products that are available there. Now, let's go ahead first and access our Zigbee to MQTT dashboard. So let's go ahead and, and access Zigbee to MQTT. Now with Zigbee to MQTT and um, that represents your whole uh, DIY Zigbee hub, this is the front end. It allows you to connect the devices. You know, it allows you to also see the functions that you can control the device. Now the first thing as part of enabling devices into the network, you want to go first to settings. You want to go click on permit join and click on submit. Now, once that is done, all you have to do with this device is go ahead and power them up. So I've got one device with me over here and I've got one device that's right behind me. Over. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to power the first device. So let me go ahead and install the first device. I go to devices, give it a couple of seconds. 
you'll see that is already refreshed. And one good thing with ZigBee to MQTT, you are allowed to raise a issue if the system itself has found a bug. So uh, very handy. So yeah, the developers out there are always and consistently updating this whole ZigBee to MQTT uh, service, the software and the combination of both. Right now we won't go and open up anything. So let's go to devices and you see that I've got access to it. So let's go first thing and rename it. So I'm going to call it Philips back rename device. Now let's go ahead and add in this one right here over here. So again, it's picked up the device. Let's not go ahead and open up the bug. I will do it right away after the video. Devices, I'm going to call this Philips site rename. So right now we have the devices and so, so it's that easy in pairing devices with Zigbee to MQTT. Now it's not just these two devices. If I go to the database and type in here Philips, there's a plethora of devices that you can add in over here. So every time Philips releases a new product, stand, follows the standard Zigbee 3 uh, protocol, it can be easily identified uh, in ZigBee to MQTT. So with this, you can eliminate that one additional hub over there, plus allows you to connect with another 2000 plus devices. So from here, let's go back to ZigBee to MQTT, the devices away. So what functionality do you get away? So obviously, if you go to exposes, you get off and on. The one behind, uh, let's choose the one that's right here. Turn it off, turn it on. You can even change the colors. So it allows you to change the colors and also some effects. So the only drawback is the effects don't get imported into HomeKit. So you'll have to create that on your own. It doesn't need that imported from the Philips Hue. Uh, you can even change any specific settings, reporting. Now, one good thing over here, these devices, these Zigbee devices are routers. So if you place them in your home, it allows you to amplify your Zigbee network consistently uh, across your home. Now, once you've added all of your devices, you want to go back to settings, undo the check uh, permit join and submit. So this is one way of securing your Zigbee network. Now let's quickly go into Homebridge. Let's log in and let's see if it's picked up the device, go to accessories. But before that, let's go to plugins and we're going to look for Zigbee to MQTT. And I already have this installed from the other couple of videos, but in settings, if you go, we go and put in the IP address where you install MQTT. Again, in the, in the description, I have the videos to all of them. And then from that, you want to give a basic username and password to access your MQTT. And just in case you want to exclude any properties of this device, you can do that. And it's that simple configuration, basically your MQTT IP address, the username and password, in case you want to isolate a certain characteristic of the device, you can add those filters here. If not, click on save and restart the service. Now, once your service is started, we want to go ahead and see to accessories and you see that the device is right here. So you fill it back, fill it side. So let's see if you have the control over here. So these devices can be controlled within Homebridge. In fact, it was that easy to integrate the device into Zigbee to MQTT from there, bring it into Homebridge. Now let's go quickly into the Apple Home side and see if we get the same control over these devices. So I will go ahead and open up the Apple Home app and the two devices are right here. So show controls, the back is on over there so I can change the color. The side, I can turn it on and change colors as well. Now the only downside is you don't get the hue scenes into Apple Home, you're basically bringing it all directly through Zigbee to MQTT into Apple HomeKit. So you, you, you lose that one feature uh, with the Philips Hue app. Uh, you can basically take advantage of this integration, reduce the third party uh, proprietary hubs that you have in your home. And then from there, from these devices, you get complete local control and also add in other third party Zigbee devices that you can find over the internet. And if you just like this video, I have a lot more Homebridge tutorials that you can use to have that self-sufficient smart home, build an affordable smart home for yourself, have total local control, and you can always upgrade as and when you need. And until the next time, have a nice day, cheers, and happy automation.